joining us. Um, my name is Victoria Anthony, I'm the Group Head of HR for Galliard Homes. Um, I'm going to spend probably about 15 minutes just talking about Galliard, for those of you who don't know us or what we do, um, how we recruit and also our views on Brexit and how it might impact us as an employer and what we're looking out for. So, as I say, we're just going to go through um, the company, the background, where we're based, um, the types of people that we look for and the types of roles we're recruiting to, and the Brexit decision and what it might mean for us in the construction sector and how we are preparing to deal with it. Um, if anybody has any questions, we can take them at the end, or we are on the stand right at the front um, near the apostrophe coffee booth, so we'll be happy to see any of you at that stand throughout the next two days. So let's get started. Um, Galliard is um, the largest, uh, the largest privately owned residential developer in the capital, and it was founded about 25 years ago now by Stephen Conway. And the family are still very much involved and are active in sourcing land, uh, procuring new sites for development, right through to uh, managing the teams and being present every day in, in our offices. Um, our first project was um, in Enfield and it was a development of 110 apartments and the closest main road was called Galliard Road, so that's where we took our name from. We've got a portfolio valued at currently just under 4 billion and it comprises of townhouses, penthouses, retail outlets, hotels and leisure centres, even more recently a visitor centre. We've got um, just under 6,000 homes under construction at the moment um, with a company turnover of about 260 million. Um, we've got about 41 sites in the pipeline currently and we employ around 700 people across the Galliard Group which is made up of Galliard Homes, Galliard Construction and a number of subsidiary companies including a luxury resort and spa in Cornwall and um, a high-end hotel in Southampton. So these are a selection of some of our current developments underway and we can give you more information about that pipeline if you come and see us on our stand. Um, some of you living in London may be familiar with these um, as some of them are quite advanced in the development stage. Most of our pipeline is within the M25, although we have more recently expanded out to places such as Luton, Slough, Hayes, uh, Bristol and we are currently involved in a project um, in Courchevel Ski Resort in France. Um, we also have acquired, um, as well as things like disused petrol stations, um, wasteland which we think is prime for regeneration, uh, we also have six Greyhound racing stadiums within our portfolio, um, only two of which we have left to develop, which are Oxford and Wimbledon, and we envisage Wimbledon kicking off in the early part of 2017. Some of the projects that you see up there, the stage, um, if you come in and out of Liverpool Street, you may have noticed that we've got a big hole in the ground there at the moment. That's a project that we're supporting um, on the site of an original Shakespeare theatre. In partnership with a number of um, JV partners, but also the Museum of London, and are building um, not just 412 apartments in a 37-storey tower. We've also got um, commercial space, leisure centre space, and for the first time, um, an underground amphitheatre, which is going to host the visitor centre. The picture in the middle is of Baltimore Tower, which is starting to dominate the skyline around the Canary Wharf area. Again, it's a large residential tower block. Um, it contains a rooftop restaurant, a number of penthouses, leisure facilities, and as I say, it's in a tower about 450 feet over the Canary Wharf Tower. The main tower is again underway. It's also referred to as Harbour Century, which is also in Docklands. Um, there's about 400 units in this project, 200 of which are housing association, which for those of you within the property sector or construction industry, we have an obligation under our planning requirements for a number of our developments to provide affordable housing. Islington, uh, we are principal contractor as part of the JV project and this is also now in progress and again will deliver large commercial space, residential and retail. So these are just a selection of some of our prime properties that we're working on at the moment. Obviously none of this would be possible without our employee base, 
So we work quite hard to recruit um, the best talent that we can and retain them. A couple of years ago, we bought pretty much 90% of our recruitment process in-house and estimate we've saved in the arena of about a quarter of a million by doing that. Um, we have a dedicated recruitment team which work end-to-end -end with um, applicants. We have a number of automated systems to try and offer a fair and equitable process for everybody so applications are received online, um, are acknowledged and, um, and then people go through a structured interview process with us. We use um, social media which has been um, a big, a big saving for us and allowed us to reach a much wider target audience. We had no presence on LinkedIn until about a year ago. We now have just under 7,000 followers and um, we've recruited probably a quarter of our um, recruits in the last year by LinkedIn. So we are quite active at posting all of our businesses on these sites. We also post on Facebook and Twitter and we have recently joined our store as a corporate entity. So people that are um, either going through the onboarding process with us or have been with us for a number of years are leaving reviews, much like you would on TripAdvisor, um, commenting on their experience with us as an employer. Um, we'd encourage you all to have a look at any number of the social media sites I've mentioned, including our external website where we post all of our current vacancies. Um, as per the introduction, we are currently recruiting for a number of roles and um, surveyors and site managers being the principal ones that we find quite difficult to recruit for, which leads us nicely on to how that might impact us going forward with the Brexit decision. So many of you remember um, what for most of us was a surprise decision to leave in June of this year. Uh, we are still awaiting the full impact of what Brexit will mean for the UK and particularly for us as an employer. We've seen interest rates cut by the Bank of England to boost the economy. We've seen the pound fall to a 30 year low, which those of us that are going, still going on holiday and um, we've seen prices start to rise, fuel may become more expensive. Um, so we're entering a period of economic uncertainty, but the path is yet unclear. So we're slightly hedging our bets as an employer as to what that might mean for our workforce. We're also wondering how the UK will fare when we leave trade partners um, and for us as an importer of materials um, we're quite concerned about our ability to continue to trade uh, a lot of our uh, glass and steel and, um, and the, furnish the furnishings for our apartments, things like marble and granite come from the EU so we are poised to see an increase in those sort of prices. The other thing, of course, which as an employer will impact us on any potential changes to employment law um, and the ability to buy in skills and immigration is obviously where we are going to see the biggest impact. In terms of recruitment, construction along with many other sectors such as education, healthcare, hospitality and manufacturing are likely to see the most significant impact because like ourselves have been traditionally reliant on a fairly high percentage of lower skilled migrants from the EU, certainly on the construction side of our business, we have a number of lower skilled employees that have come from the EU. What we don't know is whether these hundreds of thousands of migrants employed in our sector and others like us may need to leave the UK when the decision to invoke Article 50 takes place. What we anticipate is that the migrant workers may be subject to a points-based system that we employ for the likes of Australian or Kiwi nationals coming over to the UK. And the concern is that those at the lower end of the employment spectrum may not fit um, this point system. So whereas we've always struggled with the top end of highly skilled talent, we may now see that this the lower quartile of the job market actually also has a spike in employment costs. Um, however, Sadiq Khan yesterday was um, reported as um, trying to lobby the government for a London work permit which would operate tax differently to this. So we, we will wait with bated breath to see how that may benefit us as an employer. Um, as I mentioned before, some of our positions such as um, surveyors and contracts managers are in scarce supply, so we're already in a bargaining um, battle with other other companies such as ourselves and we envisage that that will also continue. 
We anticipate time to hire is likely to increase and we may need to re-evaluate our um, reliance on things like external agencies before we struggle to recruit internally. In terms of what we're working through and we're encouraging other employers to consider is um, how dependent are we on workers from the EU. We have quite a high population of EU work workers within our employee base and if they all up and leave all in one go, how would that impact us, where would our skills have to be? Um, we're trying to look at how we future-proof our workforce, so as you'll know, in, in times of uncertainty, attendance with employers has been to clamp down, stop recruitment, stop training and development. We are trying to do the opposite and continue with our learning and development initiatives to make sure that our employee base is as skilled as they possibly can be, but also see us as an employer with choice. That's the bottom point in terms of how top talent should choose us. And we're working quite hard on our employee brand and our offering in terms of remuneration and benefits to ensure that people want to join us and stay with us, particularly as we move through these uncertain times. So what next? Keep calm. Um, there has been no immediate knee-jerk reaction. The official national statistics say that the work um, Workforce stats are fairly stable, unemployment has reduced, but job creation is fairly static. Um, when Brexit is um, invoked, so Article 50 does take effect, um, it's likely to take a minimum of two years, but possibly up to six to complete. So we could be in this volatile position for quite some time. Um, there are also those skeptics out there that think it may never happen. We may invoke it, and once it's been invoked, it can actually be reversed. So we will see. All we can do as an employer is brace ourselves for change. Um, we are considering the need to recruit, so we are looking at whether we fill positions on a more temporary basis as opposed to permanent. Um, we are continuing to invest and develop our staff to ensure that we retain our talent. And we know that we are um, likely to go into battle with our competitors for top talent, but that is not that different to what we're doing already. The other thing we are considering is establishing a Brexit team, um, which a number of other employers are also doing to analyse the risks for us. So contingency plans are the way forward, but as an employer, um, we intend to continue to develop our staff and we are still open for business and then, as far as we're concerned, it's business for you as usual. So thank you all for listening. If anyone's got any questions, I'm happy to take them. Otherwise, we are on the stand at the front of the show near the apostrophe. Thank you and enjoy your time at the event.